Well, this is a bummer. This video is in the works already, but due to recent events, the tone is gonna to change completely. And frankly, I'm not sure how relevant it's going to be. In any case, today we're gonna to be discussing not that aesthetic PRS rifle in front of you, but rather this stuff. Tula 308, 165 grain soft points. If you've been watching the channel for a while, it's no secret that I am quite fond of these. There are a few videos way back in our history showing what they can do. Um, and back in the good old days, when our sitting president made headlines for calling people horse face instead of letting the Taliban dictate how and when we're going to extract our people from a 20-year-old conflict that up until a few months ago, I was pretty sure we were winning. Uh, back then, you could get these for no joke around 28 cents a round. Uh, I recommended at that time that people do that based on how accurate I found them to be. And I followed my own advice. So luckily, I was able to get a few thousand rounds when the going was cheap. And I've been living off those ever since. The rifle in front of you is my workhorse Ruger Precision in 308 Winchester. There's very little negative I could say about this rifle. It has been tremendously accurate. Uh, it's probably the most fun firearm I own. I've hunted with it. Initially, I shot PRS with this rifle before I got my second RPR in 6mm Creedmoor. Now, the reason I got a second one is, believe it or not, there was a time when you could get a 6mm Ruger Precision rifle for under $800. And then you could actually buy the accompanying match ammunition, stuff like this, federal gold medal match, for a dollar a round, or a bit over that. Of course, those were the good old days when the president couldn't say things like, if you don't know to vote for me, then you ain't black, and somehow not be a racist for saying it. In any case, things change, and the days of dollar a round match ammunition are long gone, unfortunately. So because I wanted to keep shooting PRS and had quite a bit of the Tula stockpiled, I thought I'd put my money where my mouth is and try shooting Tula 165 grain soft points at a PRS match. So that's what I did. In May of this year, after having not shot a match for over a year, I went out with my RPR and Tula 165s, and out of 33 shooters, I am proud to say that I placed 30th. <laughs> Man, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> no offense. I thought that I had my dope really figured out, and it turns out it wasn't quite on. Uh, specifically at 600 yards, when I was missing, the spotters were telling me that I was quite a bit high. So between that and me being extremely rusty, uh, I didn't do so great. So I went out with it, I chronographed it, a 10 shot average got me 2,477 feet per second. I confirmed my zero, uh, I confirmed my dope from 200 to 600 yards. And two weeks ago, I had another match. Again, there were 33 shooters, and this time uh, I'll let this video do the talking. This is a stage we had at 400 yards, two shots off uh, four positions on a PRS barricade, a uh, 400 yard target, it was a square, I believe, probably something like uh, six or eight inches across. All right, go ahead, load, make ready. You got your dope, you got your trail. Yeah. 
40 seconds. You got time. How'd you end up? What you have to do to hit? Clean it. When we get nice. Hey, you're giving that guy a haircut. Right? Shitty Russian ammo too. Let's go. Cold War. What? Oh yeah, brother. Hell yeah. Good job. Diesel ran out. It was a hilarious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you ready, sir? <laughs> I know the impact calls weren't the loudest in that video, but the ending should be pretty good evidence. Uh, those weren't paid actors. So to toot my own horn a bit, because it did feel pretty good, I did clean that stage. Eight hits out of eight shots. Now, the reason that's significant is in the probably three or four years I've been shooting PRS, the number of times that I've cleaned a stage past 200 yards even with match ammunition, uh, I could certainly count on one hand. Frankly, I'm not sure if I ever did it. Past 400 yards, I was even able to get consistent hits at 600 on one of the stages. The net result of this is out of 33 shooters, on that day I placed 14th. Now that may not sound like the best result, but if you keep in mind that most of the guys out there are pretty good shots, better shots than me, most of them are shooting either match ammunition they bought or even hand loads. Uh, most of the guys out there, it seems like they hand load. And quite a few of them are running rifles and custom actions, uh, like my fellow tactical accountants, that are quite a bit pricier than this precision. So, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back for that one isolated day of performance using this ammunition. If you do your part, and your zero's on and your dope is on, based on my results, uh, the Tula 165s are pretty impressive. In terms of groups, this is a target from years ago. I can't even tell you how many years ago. Here you had Tula 165s doing two MOA, which is not great, but here, that's uh, around three quarters MOA, five shot group, and to confirm it, after the match, I wanted to shoot some groups uh, to see exactly what I was working with. So you can see here, disregard these ones in the middle, there are two five shot groups. This one here, these four shots, that's got to be like a half MOA, uh, easily sub MOA. Disregard that fifth flyer, of course. This group two, five shots, that's probably around an MOA. This stuff is pretty impressive, guys, especially when you consider that I have shot thousands of rounds of it through this barrel and it keeps on trucking. Now, like I said at the video's beginning, this video was already in the works. And my original idea was if I could prove to myself that this ammo was good enough to use in competition, if you had nothing else to work with, I was gonna figure out the dope and share that data with you guys and recommend you go buy some and get out there and shoot. Of course, that's not the case anymore. Um, as I'm sure you've all heard, if you're watching this channel at least, our brilliant and not at all senile and incompetent commander-in-chief told all of us uh, non-responsible gun owners, unlike the uh, ANA and the Taliban, which should absolutely be entrusted with full auto lowers and night vision and drones and black hawk helicopters while the rest of us can go fuck ourselves uh, we can no longer get russian steel ammo it sounds like so this stuff 762 by 39 223 nine millimeter all that good stuff uh do not pass go do not collect 200 dollars straight to uh, jail with you if you want to bring some over going forward so if you don't have any to low 165 
Uh, don't expect to buy any and don't want to learn about the data I've collected. This is the point at which you should stop watching this video. Um, I'm not going to say much else about the political situation. Uh, other than if you're watching this and you are the type of person that subscribes to uh, liberal gun owners on Reddit or uh, Socialist Rifle Association or whatever those uh, neckbeards call themselves. If you went into this election advising people not to vote for Orange Man for whatever reason and didn't see this coming from the Biden administration when they legitimately had a tab on their campaign website devoted to their gun control plans if they were elected. Um, thanks a lot. You got what you voted for and I hope you enjoy not having ammo for your Comblock uh, revolutionary rifles going forward. So that's that. All right, back to the data. So the match where I did well, or at least not terribly, this was my dope going into it. So 100 yards zero um, for 200 yards is pretty much like half a mil. I just, I think that applies to any 308 essentially. So 300 yards, 1.6, 400 yards, 3.0, 500 yards, 4.3, 600 yards, 5.7. Now in those clips I showed, uh, I cleaned the stage at 400 holding 3.0, or not holding, dialing 3.0, but the uh, spotter told me that I gave that target a haircut. I was hitting the very top of the plate. That means this is a little high. My three impacts in a row at 600, that was 5.7. So somewhere around here is the reality of the situation. So again, the velocity I was working with was 2477 feet per second. This is a 20 inch barrel, one in 10 twist for what that's worth. If you have a different barrel length, of course, your velocity is going to be different. You should also always chrono your specific rifle anyway. I mentioned that 100 yard zero. Um, for this group, I was aiming right here. So elevation wise, it's right on. For this group, this group here, I was aiming right here. So it's maybe a half inch low, but it's, it's pretty close for 100 yard zero. Now in PRS, it's good to have some sort of application so that you can check your dope and uh, really apply it to any any target because you're not always shooting at 600 or 500 it could be like 430 or 556 uh, you never know what the sadistic stage designers will come up with so in my case I use ballistic AE app and what you need to do here is program your ballistic coefficient your muzzle velocity your zero, your bullet weight, uh, even your scope height and everything, and it should give you pretty good results. The problem with Tula 165s is on this very Russian box, there is no uh, ballistic coefficient. In fact, there's no you know ballistic data at all because uh, this is Russian mass-produced stuff and you don't really need science to kill the Hun, no do you? And if we take a look at one of the rounds itself, you can see that soft tip right there, exposed lead. It's not a very comparable shape to a standard PRS load, something like this gold metal match, 168 grain, which you can see the bullet, even just the parts we can see, is quite a bit more aerodynamic. Uh, so that leaves us with the question, where do you get your BC? I mentioned I have hunted with this rifle and the ammunition I hunt with is this Hornady American Whitetail 165 grain, so the exact same bullet weight as our Tula. And take a look at the bullet. They look pretty similar. Both exposed lead tips, soft points. And if you go on Hornady's website, you get the ballistic coefficient, which is 0.435. So 0.435 G1 ballistic coefficient, bullet going 2477 feet per second, 100 yards zero. Uh, I, that didn't get me too far off 
what my dope was uh, on the card I showed you earlier. So I worked the ballistic coefficient as the only variable. I started working it down, meaning the bullet was less slippery than the Hornady. And I finally settled on 0.39 G1 ballistic coefficient. So 0 0.390, uh, same velocity and everything. And these were the results. I'm going to splice in the screenshot, but you can see there gets us pretty close to our dope. So at 600 yards, 5.75 mils. At 400 yards, I cleaned that stage dialing 3.0, but the spotter said I was high. So I'm gonna go with 2.7. I will confirm this next time I'm out. I don't think 0.3 of a mil uh, would get me off the target. So let's hope that this is right on. In any case, uh, this is gonna be my dope going forward for Tula 165s because the good news, despite the best efforts of old Corn Pop himself, uh, as he worries about our ammo availability instead of the well-being of our people still trapped in Afghanistan, is that I do still have some of this Tula 165 stockpiled, thankfully, uh, thanking God, thanking myself for discovering it as early as I did. I guess. So should be able to keep shooting it in PRS for a while. I don't think I'm going to be shooting it uh, very much recreationally anymore because it's it's pretty precious to me for what it can do compared to anything else I could buy for anywhere near the price. I'm going to end this video with a shout out. Last Friday, I was out at dinner while on vacation and got a call from my fellow tactical accountant. just got real. Now, we've been best friends since grade school and really only ever call each other when it's an emergency situation of some sort. And in this case, I would say uh, for cheap gun guys like myself, uh, the word emergency applies. So he said, hey, the Biden administration just banned Russian ammo imports going forward. Don't know if you're aware, but you might want to get online and order what you can while you can before it all dries up. So that's exactly what I did. That night I went online, I was able to find some still pretty reasonably priced uh, Tula 308 and 223 from Global Ordnance. I got my order in, a few thousand rounds of each, and it should be here any day now. Uh, that's going to make all the difference going forward on this channel when it comes to plinking with this rifle, with my AR, um, and in general because the price of all of their ammunition is going to go up to fill this gap, guys. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I know you've heard it before, but it is what it is. 45% of the ammo supply in the US just dried up thanks to the absolute clown we have running the show over there in the White House. And we're all in it together. So to my fellow tactical accountant for that call. We ride together die together thank you guys uh we will catch you next time thanks for tuning in hopefully things pick up but i'm not optimistic take care